Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 5, Heredity. This is video number 8 and the last in our series on the first inquiry question which focuses on reproduction. In this one, we're going to very quickly overview plant and animal reproduction in agriculture. So I guess the first thing is to just look at our learning intention. And there's a couple of very important terms here. What we need to do is we need to evaluate, which is about forming a judgment, uh, about the impact of scientific knowledge. Now, what is the relevant scientific knowledge? Obviously, scientific knowledge is a big area. We need to, to think about what's the most relevant scientific knowledge that we need to look at in terms of how that can impact on the manipulation of plant and animal reproduction, specifically relating to the context of agriculture. This is a very big question, and again, like the um, last one that we looked at in human reproductive cycles, uh, I'm only going to touch on it, and I think it's one of these things that you can develop a good quality answer for yourself um, by giving you a few little hints and guides and then going and practicing doing a little bit of writing here. What is important is that when we look at this, we see both plant and animal, so we must make sure we include both in our discussion. We're looking at evaluation, so that's, a, as I said before, that's a judgment call. And we're also trying to think about the strategies that are about manipulation of reproduction. And of course, all of that is in the context of agriculture. So our success criteria there need to start from just an understanding of a different types of ways in which humans manipulate reproductive cycles of other organisms, why they do that, how successfully we uh, can do that, and also really what's the, um, the deeper impact, not just on the organisms in terms of what we desire of those populations, but what are the evolutionary consequences of uh, messing around with uh, reproductive cycles. So let's have a look at a, a bit of an overview of the history of domestication. So realistically, agriculture is about um, domestication. It's about living in harmony with animals and plants, I guess, initially. Uh, and then what's happened is that that's turned into a bit of, a, a bit of an exploitative, uh, exploitative relationship as we have sought to use these plants and animals for our, um, for, for our food requirements. So what that's meant is that we've gone from having animals sort of very roughly domesticated and the dog kind of fits very, very early or the wolf that was uh, probably hanging around human um, habitable sites um, and maybe being fed food scraps, realised very quickly that that was a, a, a good way to exist if you didn't attack um, the humans who were feeding you and you got more food. And of course, we see a huge variety in dog breeds today, um, all of which are the same species, although the mechanics of uh, reproduction between some of those different breeds may be a little on the tricky side. You can see, though, as we move forward, there's quite a long history of human association with these different animal groups in ways that we have uh, increased their population numbers in a certain area for a particular purpose. So that's often for food, but it could also be for milk. It could also be for their um, skin or coverings, uh, wool for sheep or goats, for example, but also uh, leather of different types of animals as well. And we've also, you can see a couple of these um, horses, llamas, alpacas, uh, uh, camels, also being used for transport. So they were uh, animals that weren't necessarily eaten, but were ones that were used to assist with uh, us moving across different places, particularly places like deserts where uh, humans aren't quite so good at being able to cover those distances on their own. Uh, so you can see there's lots of reasons for domestication. And I guess the main thing that we're looking for at domestic uh, in the process of domestication is turning wild to tame. So the most important thing is we, we do want these uh, animals to coexist with us. We want them to be um, uh, docile. We want them tame. We want them. We want to be able to manipulate what's going on. We want them to hang around us, uh, stay in places that we're after. We want them to be able to graze and do what they need to do. But we need to have some level or measure of control, and that means to try and breed out the wildness and favour um, docility or tameness uh, amongst our uh, agricultural species. 
But obviously, one of the other things that we wanted to do is to increase these numbers. And we've actually changed the land in a lot of ways to uh, accommodate each of these different uh, types of organisms that we've used um, in our agricultural practices. Now, this is a very old technique. Um, there's a lot of aquaculture studies that are done, particularly uh, in the indigenous populations of Australia, that have noticed um, little um, fish beds, fish, fish regions where uh, rocks have been put up to actually wall off um, little pools and ponds um, that make it a little bit easier for the people to catch the fish. Um, so this is kind of a, a, an early precursor, if you like, to the whole idea of domestication. It's at least corralling, keeping these uh, particular organisms in a place that makes it easier for us to harvest them and also to manage them in terms of their population numbers and behaviour. Um, so this is a very old process. It involves a very large range of different uh, organisms. And I think picking any one of these to uh, look at in terms of some of the specific ways in which we have manipulated their reproductive strategies uh, would be a good way for you to be uh, tackling this question. Animals aren't the only thing we need to look at here. And Australia has a very good history um, of... Uh, involvement in wheat breeding as well. And I suggest you look at some of the uh, particular types of uh, wheats uh, to get a bit of an idea of the sort of ways that we've been able to manipulate um, the reproductive cycles and the desired characteristics. So when we're talking about reproductive technologies, particularly when we're talking about manipulation, I'm basically saying if I told you to breed with someone, that's manipulation. Are you being a human? Would probably say, go away, I won't, um, which you should. But um, anything that says, look, we're interested in, in particular characteristics, uh, we want to keep the males and females separate so that we control which males breed with which females, um, to the point where we actually start involving specific types of technology in our um, management of livestock and also of our produce is a reproductive manipulation technology. So, um, so this, so there's a lot of things that fall into these categories and I don't think you need them all, but I think it's important that you've got a couple of examples that you can look at. Um, certainly, uh, this is a nice little website here to have a look at, just as a nice overview of what's happening in agriculture. And it talks about a couple of things in particular that you can't really see from this diagram. And, and I, that's one of the reasons I encourage you to go and have a look at this site. You can see superovulation is one of the things that's part of this. Uh, you may also see um, artificial insemination is another process that's also part of this. And embryo transfer, embryo implantation. In each of these cases, we have had some sort of human involvement in the cycle of reproduction. So if the cycle of reproduction is just about getting the sperm to the egg and uh, animals have a natural way of doing that, if we involve ourselves anywhere in that process, whether it's artificially inseminating the cows, whether it's uh, looking at uh, encouraging the uh, number of eggs that are being released to um, this, the idea behind super ovulation, whether it's just that we're actually now in a position where with in vitro fertilization or IVF, that we're able to um, analyze the embryos in some way to be able to take a look at what's happening, how the cells are dividing, and then transplant ones that are specific to the sort of characteristics that we want, um, right up to the point where we actually clone individuals and cloning is a very uh, relatively old technique. Um, Dolly the sheep was the first one. You can go and have a little bit of a look at um, what happened with Dolly. It's a, it's a great story, but a sad story as well. Our, our techniques, and it's a story that's happened uh, some time ago, and our techniques on cloning are still not good. So it's one of those things that we kind of learned how to do, and then we didn't really refine the technique much after that because we haven't really been able to perfect it. One other thing that can cause a little bit of controversy and something that you may like to, to have a bit of a chat about are, are GMOs, genetically modified organisms, uh, which could be um, taking genes from one type of organism and putting them into the um, genetic makeup of another organism, maybe doing that in vitro and then allowing the um, cells to develop and to see what 
actually um, happens with the individuals. Obviously, these sorts of changes are going to affect um, all generations beyond the individual. So it's one thing for us to kind of play around a little bit and, and artificially select the strongest, the fastest growing, the species with the best wool, the best production of wheat uh, or fruits or the, the seedless varieties. There's a whole range of different reasons why we might choose to breed certain types of agricultural species in the way that we do. But when we start the manipulation process, we don't just necessarily affect the individuals that are part of that generation that we're producing. We may ultimately have an impact on generations well beyond that, that one that we were manipulating. So there's a lot of very important implications around the manipulation of reproductive um, cycles for plants and animals that are very important in agriculture. So it's important that you make sure you pick one plant and one animal example and focus in your attention on uh, as much detail as you can possibly add. And don't forget this is an evaluate um, area so we need to make sure that we we actually think about exactly what impact we are having and about how positive and negative that can be. Thanks for watching.